There is nothing like the main event. Yes! To win is to navigate through a treacherous sea of competitors. Over 8,700 began the journey. This is the last of my money. Now only 135 <laughs> remain. Yeah! Top pros have been sunk. It's over. That's all there is to it. While newcomers have moved on to uncharted territory. There's going to be a lot more to come. I already know. Oh! But a familiar menace still lurks. Umberto! Umberto! Dicho! <laughs> Umberto Brennis is one of only a handful of remaining pros. Dicho is hungry! Ow! And this two-time bracelet winner and his little friend are looking to take a bite out of the field. Yum, 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 Can the remaining players survive Umberto's shark attack? Oh, 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 oh. Or will they become his next victim? Only my friend! Welcome to the main event of the 2006 World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Only 135 players remain in this Rio poker room. Among them are many emerging faces, including the chip leader, Jamie Gold. How much you playing with? But don't count out the established pros like Prahlad Friedman. With the field finally reduced to a manageable size, you'd have to count the pros among the favorites. Hello, everyone. I'm Lon McCarran, along with Norman Chad. Over 8,600 players have already been eliminated, including most of the top pros. But in their absence, a new group of colorful characters has emerged. But the most colorful of them all happens to be a top pro. Umberto Brennis is two parts card shark, one part lounge act. Umberto doesn't play poker, he performs poker. He's got two bracelets and speaks two languages, Spanish and a Spanish version of English. Ah, but in poker, cards speak, and Umberto's usually speak loudest. Umberto joins us on center stage, playing at the featured table as we begin tonight's action. Don't be misled by his playful antics. He finished fourth in the main event in 1988. He is a real shark in fool's clothing. Also at this featured table, Michael Binger. He's a theoretical particle physicist. Says he's trying to find a balance between physics and poker. Let me help him. There is none. <laughs> On the Milwaukee's best light pocket cam, Michael Binger folds an 8-4 offsuit. There is 25-year-old Dustin Holmes from Los Angeles who started the day with almost 1.2 million chips, about twice the average in the room. He's going to raise it up to 40,000 with ace-king offsuit. The blinds are at 6 and 12,000 and a 2,000 chip ante from each player. Umberto Brennis now with pocket jacks. Ah, that's the universal sign for a raise, or, or maybe it's the universal sign for I'm about to put my sunglasses on. <laughs> Umberto will raise. Oh man, sir, the charge is coming. Raise 150. <laughs> my goodness, that looks more intimidating. He's got the shark on it. I don't think Dustin Holmes cares much for land sharks. Well. Humberto's card predicting shark has been quite busy in this main event. The char. <laughs> My friend, when the char is half hundred, it's terrible. The char only. <laughs> I'm all in. Wow, there's a response to the shark. <laughs> and the shark is silenced. You? <laughs> How much? About a million. Which is more than Umberto has. He'd be all in if he calls us. Good move. Holmes trying to avoid the glare of Umberto. Umberto with pocket jacks. Usually pretty hard to muck those. Heads up. The jacks spins today. Come on, Char. This World Series rookie turning the screws on Umberto Brennis. Oh, right, oh, right. Hmm. I have a different hand, but I'm not a gambler. He said he has the best hand, but he's not fond of young, brash internet players who like to push all in before the flop without blinking an eye. Nice translation. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Good and long, Umberto yeah. mucks his big pair. You dumb two jacks or something? I prefer... Wait. Oh, I don't get the shark. The shark is coming. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Go to, go to the house and come back. Holmes wanted the shark and Humberto's chips. He's not going to get it. Most amateurs would have played those jacks. Humberto decided he did not want to gamble right there. So after winning those chips, Dustin Holmes moves into eighth place in our Castrol chip count. The only top pro on the leaderboard, Prahlad Friedman in sixth. And with over 3.7 million chips, our chip leader is Jamie Gold from Malibu, California. And there is Jamie Gold sitting at the outer table right now. He folds his hand. 
In third place, you saw the name Jim Rudis. Well, there he is. The table yeah. awaiting a decision by Rudis after Brian Mikon pushed all in. Okay. This is also a donkey wand that says donkey. Well, I can't fold. I call. What do you got? So oh. Jim Rudis will make the call and put Mikon at risk. Rudis with the ace king against the jacks of Brian Mikon. Mikon's known as king of the degenerates and Mikon the icon, so he's a degenerate icon. The flop is two queens and an eight. Mikon's jacks hold up through there. Still a coin flip. Rudis gets a flush draw. Next card is a jack, and Mikon turns a full boat. That's a good card. Mikon puts an end to it. Rudis is drawing dead. So Brian Mikon doubles up and a bit more with the blinds and andies. Mikon plays well. One day he may dress well. All right, let's move to one of the other outer tables and the man who once ruled this room with his dominating chip stack. All in in the call, 141. That is Dimitri Nobles in the lead right now with aces oh, up. The all in is from Rhett Butler from Maryland. He holds a pair of aces with a straight draw. Rhett seems almost at peace with his fate. He's a three to one dog here. Rhett Butler would need a 10 or a king to take the whole pot. A queen or a jack, they would split it. Otherwise, Blank. Rhett Butler is gone with the wind. The main event's been a roller coaster ride for Dimitri, but he's got his opponent on the ropes. The yes. river card, oh, is a king, and that's Broadway for Butler. He hit it straight on the river. And Rhett Butler must be a Phil Ivey disciple showing very little emotion. And more troubles for Nobles. Shake it off. Time to regroup again. The 2006 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brewed for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company. And in part by Harris Entertainment, home of the world's richest poker tournament. And ParadisePoker.net, home of the free million dollar poker tournament. The World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main Event. Back at the Rio, the KFC Snacker Camp gives us a great view of this poker room and the 120 remaining players in this year's main event. Most of them relatively new to this event, but a few top pros have made it this far. They receive business as usual for Alan Cunningham. Elsewhere in the room, a few of the other top pros find themselves sitting at the same table. The pros are a vanishing breed, but three are sitting together. There is Annie Duke, and there is Jeff Lissandro, and they are joined at this table by Prahlad Friedman. Friedman right now involved in a hand with Kevin Daly. Daly moved all in with pocket queens after the flop, was called by Prahlad holding a set of jacks. Turn card to come now. And it's another jack. Friedman ends Daly's run right away with quads. Daly had Friedman dominated before the flop, but it's Daly going home. The meaningless river card. Oh, a queen. Queen's full for Daly's not good enough. That's cruel, Lon. Lon, I'm going to tell you again, do not play poker for a living. I don't know how I do it. <laughs> so Prahlad picks up more chips. He's obviously having a great main event. He'd be the first to tell you his internet experience has helped get him this far. I've played so many thousands of hands online. Guys like Doyle Brunson, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I've played as many hands as him. Just clicking away, you know, like, shh. I'm trying to avoid carpal tunnel, though, you know. How about this? I'll tell you your hand. Well, I took an IQ test. They said I was like a visual mathematician. I'm good at spotting patterns, and spotting patterns is a big thing. I know exactly what you yeah, have. Really? I've worked so hard at this game, and I've developed some sick abilities to just to know exactly what people have sometimes. You have a king of spades and a king of hearts. Yeah, Online, I know what people have a lot of times. So now I'm playing live. I can see the guy. He's like twitching. I can tell that people are nervous or they like their hand or not. And online, it's like such a guessing game. I said, It's just like, man, I think I might have to play live a little bit more. When he's online, he plays under the names Mahatma, Zweig, Prefontaine, and Spirit Rock. When he's in a card room, he's just Prahlad Friedman. And known as one of our chip leaders right now in this 2006 main event. All right, let's get back to our featured table. Eric Freiberg, like Michael Binger, was a physics major in college, but he dropped out to play poker. We don't recommend that. He's got pocket kings. Freiberg says Swedes are the best poker players in the world. <laughs> Humberto Brennis may have something to say about that. Both with 7-4 offsuit. He can't say anything right now. Brady Shepard 
from nearby Henderson, Nevada with pocket race. tens. Yeah, I see. The American's going to raise. That's American poker. He is a real estate appraiser. Says he's going to raise it to 60000 You know, with all the mortgage brokers that we've seen in this tournament, he hooks up. He could make a killing here. <laughs> And Tyler Teague is a mortgage banker from Arizona with Ace King. He's in the big blind, and he is going to call the raise. I go all in. And Freiburg says re-raise all in. 629000 more with his Kings. Action on Brady Shepard. Okay, I'm all in. <laughs> he says all in with his pocket tens. With two people already in, pot odds be damned. Teague should be looking for an exit door. Call. Teague will call, so with a chance to knock off two players, he's got them both covered. But it's Freiburg with the Kings who has the lead right now. We got three first-year World Series main event players in their 20s. It's an all-in fest before the flop lawn, and of course the Americans are behind. We're behind in everything these days. It is Freiburg with his Kings and Coffee leading the way. Here's the flop. Four, seven, six, all low cards in this three-way high card showdown. Well, maybe there'll be a straight on the board and everybody gets their money back. All right, turn card is a queen. That misses everyone. Freiburg sipping his latte like he doesn't have a care in the world, but he could triple up. Shepard needs a 10 no to knock out Freiburg. Me, Teague no would need an ace. No. It's a five, and Freiburg with his kinks triples up. What a bonanza. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Tyler Teague had a chance to knock off two players. Shepard. With his tens, not good enough. It is Freiburg winning the lotto. He's now over two million chips. Oh, these non-Americans are so polite. It's funny how polite people get when they're shoved two million chips. So a nice win for Freiburg right there. Okay, to the outer tables. Annie Duke put her tournament life on the line pre-flop with ace three. She was called by Jeff Lissandra holding pocket eights. Annie Duke with one World Series bracelet. Lissandra does not have a bracelet, but he has one World Series circuit title, and they're banging heads right here. All right, the flop is 9-9-3. Duke pairs her three, but she still trails. And Lissandra works the crowd while Annie's fate is decided. Turn card now is a deuce no help to Duke, who's down to her last card. Does not look good for Duke. Lissandra's got her on the ropes. Annie would need an ace or a three, or her main event is over. River card is a four, gives the pot to Lissandro, and Annie Duke is gone from this main event. She finished 10th here in 2000. Not able to duplicate that this time. So one pro knocks off another. Where's the professional courtesy? Annie Duke overcame a near elimination earlier in the main event and makes an impressive run to finish in 88th place. Welcome back to the Rio in the main event of the World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. We have a mostly new set of characters here at the feature table, including our chip leader, Jamie Gold. But don't worry, Umberto Brennis is here, though in a different seat. And as we look at his hole cards on the Milwaukee's Best Light pocket cam, it is Pocket Kings. And there goes the thumbs up again. That means chips and a shark. The char, the char have a big stack. Mm. The chair is hungry, hungry. The chip average right now is about a million chips, so Umberto needs to get some work done. He raises it no, up to 50,000. Why are you going to pull me out? Call. Lowell Kim with ace queen offsuit is going to make the call. Oh, Kim, a former software wow. product manager. Now to chip leader Jamie Gold. Call. All right. He makes the call with Jack oh, nine of diamonds right. in the big blind. Umberto seems happy to have a chance to get some of the chip leader's chips. Action! Action! Hungry! The shark is hungry. Eat! Come on! Umberto got the action he was looking for, and he leads going to the flop. The flop is a 7 5. Kim paired his ace to grab the lead. All right! I check. Gold checks, Umberto. The shark checks also. And Kim looks like he hit his ace. The shark knows he hit his ace. Feed the shark. Lowell Kim pushes out 150,000 chips. Gold will fold. Alberto. 
How much does he like the Kings? Apparently not much. We saw him lay down the Jacks, and now he rightly lays the Kings down to the Aces. And the Shark eats its own. <laughs> Yesterday they lose to A's and now to Kings, and I'm stealing. My God. Well, Umberto berating himself June. for forgetting to TiVo live with Regis and Kelly today. Oh, well, Lowell Kim will take that pot. My God, what is he doing? Umberto oh. Brennan's mumbling to himself, but he made a good lay down. His Kings were up against the Aces. He's struggling right now to gain momentum, but as we have seen, you cannot keep him or his sidekick down for long. Shot is coming, shot is coming, come on, come on. My name is Humberto Brenes, I am from Costa Rica. Oh, you block me, you try block me. You think Humberto is crazy? No. Humberto no block. I come to Las Vegas in 87, and the next year uh, I have a good tournament. Humberto Brenes is obviously bluffing. Humberto no block, he's a lucky man. A big one I play for plays. I come back every year now. This is Humberto! For me, it's very difficult to speak. I speak with you here, it's, I scare you. But in the table, it's easy. Hey, happy now. The table no give me stress. Humberto, Humberto. In poker, it's you and me. Hey, my friend. I like the competition. Every time I see you, you're winning. I have a medical life, and the poker is good too. You know what you say, Charlie, in Spanish? Humberto. <laughs> At 54 years of age, Umberto is one of the oldest players left here in the main event. Uh, don't worry, I have time, I have time. Patience, this is the game. Well, as you mentioned, Norman, this is not Umberto's first rodeo. He's been around the block a time or two. He knows patience is the key, especially in a field filled with young players. Young guys like Lee Force at an outer table. Looks like he's playing some kitty games. His nickname is Jungle Boy. I can see that. Doesn't have a hat, so he's hiding in his hair. I have a good hair. And a bad barber. Thank you. And Lee Force will take that pot. Well, I hope you call. One of the young players thriving in this main event is Paul Wasica from Westminster, Colorado. He used to run a restaurant. Now he plays poker. Nickname is Quickfish. And there is young Eric Molina seems to be in some trouble with the floor man and deal. Hell, there is no way. PG-13, okay, what are, what are the swear words that get you to tell me? I just no, wanna, let me I'm, say, let me say I'm calm, I'm calm. calm. I want to ask you. Eric's father wondering where it all went wrong. Are you serious? Anyway, so Care Bears, that is my new swear word, is Care Bears. Well, he's going to Care Bears in a handbasket line. <laughs> On our tournament update, you see 80 players are left. Jamie Gold leads the way with 3.2 million chips. The blinds are at 8 and 16,000. Umberto Brennis, double bracelet winner with ace nine off suit. His cards go into the muck. Action over to Lowell Kim, who just took some chips off Umberto. Ace Jack. Kim went to MIT with an MBA from Michigan. Not that tough. <laughs> and Kim is going to raise it up to 70,000 chips to San Antonio's own Richard Lee, who folds. And to our chip leader, Jamie Gold, 6'5", off suit. Gold, a talent agent turned TV producer. He's in the big blind. I call. And we'll make the call. Oh, that's creative. That's actually more creative than most Hollywood scripts, 6'5", off suit. So Kim with the ace jack has the lead. The flop is king, king, jack. Kim hits his jack to take a commanding lead. Gold checks with his 1% chance of winning this hand. Don't worry, he's still got three kings. He looks like he has three kings. That's exactly what he wants to look like. And he's going to push in 100,000 chips. Make it 200. Wow, Jamie comes back over the top. That's very creative, Lon. Th that's Spielberg-like. So a big raise and a big bluff back into the face of Kim. And Kim not happy, and he no longer looks like he has three kings. I'll show you either way. You got aces. You probably have no choice. You got a king, I'm in a lot of trouble. 
I'm just trying to decide if you have the king, which I think you do. I'll show you. Gold working the bluff. Kim sounds like he's leaning towards folding. This isn't the way you want to go out. It's true. Gold selling his bill of goods hard. And Kim bucks him. Five, oh. six. Wow. You cannot trust anyone from Hollywood at any time. Well, Jamie Gold not letting all those chips go to waste. The Wiley power play adds even more to his leading chip stack. The World Series of Poker Championship Moments. Texas Dolly himself, Doyle Brunson. Before he became a legend. Thanks a lot. Before he won 10 bracelets. Before he wrote and rewrote the book on poker. Doyle Brunson won back-to-back -back main event championships with the unlikeliest of hands, the 10 Deuce. They call the 10 Deuce, you know, the Doyle Brunson. A couple of rags, but for Doyle, these are significant cards, and he's going to raise with the 10 and 2. I know it's a terrible hand, and, you know, and I try not to play it, but I've got fond memories with that 10 Deuce. I just couldn't help myself. I won 10 bracelets, two world championships. Fat lady hadn't sung yet. Ten bracelets and two main event championships. Yet another ten deuce for the legend of poker, Doyle Brunson. The amazing thing is, both times that Doyle played ten deuce to win the main event, he had a pair of tens on the flop, a deuce fell on the turn, and he made tens full on the river. All right, back to the action in the Rio Poker Room. There is Joe Hashem, the defending champion, who was knocked out earlier in this tournament, sharing some words of wisdom with Jeff Lissandro. Yes. There is Ken Jacobs taking in another pot. His yes. dad nearby, very proud. Father Tom made the main event final table twice. Ken hoping they can become the first father and son both to make the main event final table. No woman has ever won the main event. One woman is left in this year's field. Sable Cohen from Oakland, California. She's a student at Cal Berkeley. All right, let's get back to the featured table. You know what I miss about the large field is hearing bad beat stories in a dozen different languages as you walk around the halls here. <laughs> Jamie Gold, our chip leader with 3.3 million. Umberto Brennis has some work to do, so he's got a nice feeding ground in Jamie Gold's chip stack if he wants to attack it. Brennis with ace-queen offsuit. He signals a raise. Does he ever chart use the left out. thumb? The chart is coming, coming, coming. All the way? And the chart say now, <laughs> you know can bluff it. Never, Umberto. You know can bluff it. It's impossible to bluff to Umberto. It's your, I can't, your it's bet. Easy, it's easy. How can I bluff yeah. when you're you betting? You see this? I move. Yeah, all for you, my friend. I appreciate it. Yeah, you I'll can let eat. you know in a minute. Okay? I'll let you know in one minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Double me, please. Now Double me, please, now please. Now I have hungry. I need customer, please. One customer, one. One, one is enough for me. One, come on, my friend. I, the, the big one. Believe me, you don't want me to call. Because if I call, I got you. You can do it. If you give nuts, I give you. Come on. Come on. Oh, my friend. Oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting next to Umberto on like a 16 hour bus ride? <laughs> He'd make it go by real quick, or it might feel like the longest bus ride in the history of the world. You keep everything entertained, Umberto. Yeah. <laughs> Umberto Shark only got the blinds and Annie's. It's got to still be a little hungry, at least. To the outer tables, where one-time chip leader Dimitri Nobles is in trouble after the flop. Nobles holds king high against Marcello De Grosso's set of sixes. Del oh, Grosso oh, calls oh, right away, and Dimitri sees he moved in at the wrong time. Yeah. Yep. Dimitri has been a joy to watch, Lon, but his reckless style finally has bit him in the butt. So De Grosso with a chance to knock off a big fish. 7-8. Seven, 7-8. Eight. Seven, eight. The turn card is a 9, and that means the end of the long, winding, bumpy road for Dimitri Nobles. Knocked off by Marcella De Grosso. <laughs> y'all have fun. Good luck to all y'all. Yeah, and Del Grosso mopping up the last vestiges of Dimitri Nobles. He ran in the fast lane for a long time, but finally flamed out before the race was over.
Welcome back inside the Rio and the World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Life where Jamie Gold still leads the way with 3.7 million chips. Please, I need one guy double me. You double me, please. Double you? Okay. Yeah. He can afford to double a couple of us up. There is Chris Keeley from the state of Washington. Owns a couple of casinos up there. He's got a jack. He's got a queen. Offsuit. And he calls the big blind, which is at 20,000 right now, to Richard Lee. He's an amateur, but he's not new to the game. Says he's been playing for 40 years. Nine, eight of spades. Lon, we're playing for a $12 million first prize, and I don't recognize hardly a single soul out there. Not even Nikolai Vivette? Oh, I ran into him in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a 6-5 of clubs and makes the call to Fred Goldberg, also with a 6-5, suited. He looks like Chris Moneymaker. <laughs> to one of our chip leaders, Jim Rudis in the big blind with no raises ahead of him. King eight offsuit. He'll check his option. Five to the flop. The flop is eight, king nine. Rudis with kings up has the lead. Lee also picked up two pair. Sorry? Check. Goldberg first to act. He got nothing. He checks. Now Rudis will bet 100,000 to Keeley now. Oh. Wow. Keeley called, really? On a draw. Gut shot, straight draw. And now Lee with the lower two pair. And he'll make the call. Lee might have even thought of raising right there with his two pair. <laughs> Here comes a bet just with four clubs. Well, that's a pretty good draw. It's better than the gut shot, straight draw. But Goldberg gets out of the way, so four players will see the turn. And now the turn is a four. That missed everyone. Rudis still leads. Rudis with kings up. Lee with nines up. Rudis first to act. 400,000 chips go out to the pot. Well, that should be a wake-up call for Keeley. They're the same two cards. We've been over this. Into the muck they go. Now Lee also has two pair. If I'm Richard Lee, I've got to love my hand, but actually only a nine could help him. This is a dangerous spot for him. It's a tough hand to get away from. Almost a million chips in the pot. Oh, what a lay down by Richard Lee, and Vivit gives it up as well, and Rudis takes the pot. Rudis was aggressive there with his betting. Richard Lee doesn't like that he laid his hand down, but he's even smarter than he knows. Lee did the right thing in that moment, and Rudis improves on one of the leading chip stacks here in the Rio Poker Room. Let's get to one of the outer tables. There is Ken Jacobs, holds a King Jack suited. Call the all-in of Brian Nadell, who's got ace-10 of clubs. Jacobs, though, is going to need to come from behind to eliminate Nadell. Okay, God, one time more. Nadell finished 60th in the main event in 2003. Okay, boys, this is what we all came here for. Actually, I came here for the buffet. <laughs> well, you're suited to a space. Yeah. Any? All right, well, Ken is going to need all the support he can get from his dad and the dealer as we go to the flop. Give me an ace. The flop is king for Jack. What a flop for Jacobs, who gets kings up. And Nadell, who looks like he's passing a kidney stone, has picked up a royal flush draw for his tournament life. Huh? Oh, please give me a queen. Clubs, queen of clubs, queen of clubs. Turn card is an ace of diamonds. The Dell okay. stays alive. Okay, now he hit my ace in here. And now nearly half the deck will save Nadell. An ace, 10, four, queen, or club, or Nadell is done. The river card is a five, and Jacobs wins the hand, and all the chips of Brian Nadell. And Nadell is stricken. I think it's relief we see from Team Jacobs more than anything else. But on the other side of the fence, obvious shock and pain from Brian Nadell. He took the brunt of that flop, which led eventually to his demise. So Nadell goes out in 67th place as this main event field continues to shrink. Told my boy Jason Miller to pull the thriller dance one time. All right, I'm all in. <laughs> there is Brian Mikon, perhaps an Umberto Brennison training, That's moves funny. all in. It's a tough crowd. You guys kidding me? What's thriller? The thriller dance? You ever see the, Jack, the Michael Jackson thriller video? I'm kidding. Yeah, if Michael Jackson did the thriller dance like that, it would have sold 72 copies. The ace of clubs. I should have to see the other one. I should have to see the other one. 
another one. Everyone falls to Mike Hahn, and he keeps nice hanging in there after taking that pot. All right, let's move to another outer table here at the Rio Poker Room, and we pick up with another chatty youngster. Eric Molina is making a bet 200,000 chips. A pitiful 200,000. That's what I raise. Molina is brash. He's young. He's not the boy next door. And that bet forces folds all around the table. Nobody wanting to get involved with that big chip stack. Care Bear! I heard it. I heard it. I heard the swear word. I heard it. Man, man, do not say that word because they'll, they'll put you on time now. I, I already heard well, it. Well, as you mentioned, Norman, Molina is not afraid to speak up. At 21 years old, he is one of the youngest remaining players, but he's making more noise in this one event than most veterans have made in their entire poker career. I'm a gambler first and a poker player second. I'm not afraid to roll the dice. If someone tries to mess with my game, then I just show them what I'm about. That's what I want. I want your chips over here. No, you're a jerk. You should just stick to the rules. I'm not going to let someone else affect me. I have a goal. Let me finish the sentence, and then you can talk. No matter what anyone else does, I'm just going to stick to it. So that they can do what they want to try to stop me, but I'll just keep going. I said that I hate. Did I not say overpair? I called it. I wanted to gamble. I'm going to ask guy at the table, but don't just don't cross me. I would love to knock you out. I call you. I follow through on my promises. If I say I'm going to take your chips, I'll take them. I love your hand. But. As you mentioned, Lon, Molina is 21 years old, and he says if he wins the main event, he will retire at the age of 21. All right, now. Molina faces an all-in raise from Clint Brotherton pre-flop with Jack-8, even though Molina threatened to call Brotherton down with anything. I promise I would call you. I call. I haven't looked. Molina makes the call call blind, and this is our degree all-in moment. I've got 160 left. What are you doing? What do I have? Flip them over. Molina ordering the dealer to turn over his cards. King nine. Uh-oh. What are you doing? I have 160 oh, left. Yeah. Molina berating Brotherton for pushing with the Jack Eight. Call them blind, baby. Gambling. Now the flop. Five deuce. King Molina paired his king. And that all but shuts the door on Brotherton's main event. Made the call blind and hit the king. Now the turn card is a three, and that means the end of the main event for Clint Brotherton. Molina gets the degree check mark. Yeah. I have to push. I have to I'm, I'm not going to lie, man. What? I know. I know. Good game. Brotherton being gracious, shaking Molina's hand. I don't know if I would do the same. Brotherton felt the time was right with that short stack. He goes out in 66th place, takes home almost $91,000, and Molina will collect the rest of his chips. What is he doing pushing with Jack A? That's if nothing else, Eric Molina is making a name for himself. The Degree All In Moment is brought to you by Degree for Men, protects men who take risks. The World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main Event. Welcome back inside the Rio Poker Room in the main event to the outer tables. The Jacobs look a little nervous. Sun Ken moved all in with an ace 10 of hearts. Eric Molina made the initial raise with a suited Queen Jack. I would hope you had better than that. Unbelievable. Amateurs. How to win friends and influence people by Eric Molina. Jacobs with a slight advantage going to the flop. Good move. Now the flop. Three King Jack Molina takes the lead, pairing his Jack. Big trouble for Jacobs. He's nearly a four to one dog. He has picked up a straight draw. Turn card now is a nine. No help to Jacobs. Two. Jacobs can stay alive here with an ace or a queen. Two, baby. River card is a blank. Terrible call. Molina wins the hand. Terrible move. Ken Jacobs with a nice run will go home in 62nd place. But if I raise $100,000, what are you doing with Ace-10 suited in the pot? What are you doing unsupervised? What are you doing? To paraphrase George Costanza, the jerk store called, and they were out of this guy. Ken Jacobs had hoped to follow in his father Tom's footsteps to the final table, but instead, Dad will follow his son to the exit. Now taking a look at the Castrol chip count, 
Richard Lee is in 10th place now. 2.6 million chips. Rhett Butler, we saw earlier, over 3 million. But the chip leader continues to be Jamie Gold. Is this guy doubling his chips every 20 minutes, Norman? <laughs> it's like people are walking up to him, tapping him on the shoulder and say, here are my chips. Players have shifted around. We see Jamie there on the outer table. Action now continuing at the feature table. One man not on the leaderboard is Umberto Brennis. He's been struggling tonight, but perhaps he'll find the luck he needs with the help of his little shark card protector, which brings us to the subject of this week's edition of The Nuts. Card protectors are for idiots, and whenever I see one using one, I want to smash their face into the felt. After every hand, you got to go, and they watch, and then they move it. There's one guy has a little round thing like this, brown. It looks like dog do. I thought it was very vulgar. I've seen Tampax used, which I thought was kind of bizarre. I need a large vibrating egg to put over my chips. The ones that Greg Ramey used are pretty strange. I mean, he's a sell those things. Why do you need, like, your wife's body molded out of polycarbonate? I'm very superstitious. I've been running so bad at the World Series that I brought the Danaman Globe with me. And, uh, uh, it's not working. I think there's only one good card protector left, and that's a chip. I never have to use that one. It means I'm never all in, therefore I win the tournament. I used to use my wedding ring as a card protector, Lon, but as I found out, the wedding ring doesn't protect anything. <laughs> Once again, players have been moved around the room, and Sable Cohen, the last woman left in the main event, has been brought to our featured table. And Eric Freiberg has been brought back to the featured table. Checks his whole cards of Jack-10 offsuit. Freiberg has been very busy. He's second in chips now, makes the call. Speaking of the last woman, Lon, where are all the women? In the midst of this poker boom, only 3% of the main event field were women. Alberto Brennis folded Sable Cohen. King eight offsuit. I'm all in. All in. He's going to move all in with her remaining 152,000 chips. Well, I gamble with you. Good luck. I call you. Freiburg can't afford it. Well, I'm gambling too. Well, she does call herself a gambler and a student in that order. She didn't have much choice here with her dwindling chip stack and an easy call for Freiburg. <laughs> I'm hoping for a king. Do it for the ladies, okay? <laughs> All the ladies out there want to see this one win. <laughs> king. Here's our flop. Everything but a king. Oh, man. Pair of jacks for Freiburg. Ah, king, king, king. And now ten. king's no good. It would give Freiburg a straight. Cohen needs a 10 for her straight. It's a four of diamonds. On, no ten. help to Cohen. Down to her last chance. Really, really, really want a 10. Only a 10 keeps Cohen alive. River card is an 8. Ah, oh, wrong out. Oh, Eric wow. Freiburg wins the hand. Nice playing with you. And Sable Cohen, the last woman left in the 2006 main event, will go out in 56th place. A nice run for Cohen, but still we've had only one woman in history, Barbara Enright in 1995, make the main event final table. Cohen will take home almost $124,000. Freiburg, no gentleman there, taking out the last lady. All right, let's look at our tournament update now. We have 55 players remaining. Jamie Gold is still our chip leader with almost 7 million. The blinds are at 12 and 24,000. To the outer tables now, and Jeff Lissandro sparring with Cheng Yu. Lissandro has made the nut diamond flush. Yu holds two pair after the turn, needs full house to win it. We're going all in. And Lissandro casually commits the rest of his chips with that nut flush. And now the re-raise back to Cheng Yu. Well, you know what, some something, let's see. I got 600, 700. I'm here to gamble, right? He's here to gamble, but as it turns out, this is not a good spot to gamble in. Yu figuring out how much of his stack he would have to commit. I'm here to gamble, I'll call. He makes the call, and the nut flush is turned over by Lissandro. You need a jack or a 10 to knock out Lissandro. River card is a nine. Woo! Jeffrey Lissandro's flush is good, and he doubles up and collects a little breathing room at the expense of Ching Yu. I'm here to gamble. I'm here to win. The pro set the trap. I didn't come here to gamble. And the young gambler took the bait. I'll put a mole in with the nuts, man. 
The 2006 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, fruit for a man's taste, Miller Brewing Company, and in part by PokerStars.net. Play the moneymaker millionaire for free. Millions in cash and prizes. And Harris Entertainment, home of the world's richest poker tournament. Welcome back to the main event and the Rio Poker Room. Chip leader Jamie Gold is hooked up in a hand with smack talking leader Eric Molina. It is Gold's turn to act. 300. And he is going to raise the 300,000 after the turn. <laughs> back to Molina now. I uh, raise. Got a raise, it's coming you, up. You raised me 200? Yes. And a re raise from Eric raise. Molina. Raise. Might as well put it all in. Might as well. Not that much left. I'm on. All in. There you go. Jamie should be careful what he wished for. Big re raise back to gold. Molina flips his all in button, ends up in front of Jamie Gold, and it's fired hey, back. Hey, don't be an ass. Excuse me? Asses right, in right, glass right. houses shouldn't throw chips. Just because you're losing, that's fine. I'm losing. Yeah. Who's sitting there with no chips? <laughs> losing this answer. Maybe. <laughs> Call me then. You want to make a side bet I'm who lasts stop. longer in the you? tournament? Let's stop. It really wasn't sure. That yeah? Chance. How much? How about you get in the sand right now? Yeah. How much? This is a classy confrontation. Call me then. Molina testing the patience of chip leader Jamie Gold. You're going to fold. Stop wasting time, so. You just got caught, so why don't you just hurry up? That's at 70, Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I know you did. Gold will fold. And Molina takes the pot. I'll see you at the end. I mean, sorry, no, I won't. I'll be honest with you, Lon. I don't like walking to a card room when this is what I see in here. I, I wish they would take it outside to, like, Antarctica. Well, thanks for your 300,000, dollars. You're welcome. Good luck. Well, the hand is over, but these two just will not let it go. The jousting continues. Yeah. Excuse me, penalty. Not penalty. Not penalty. Not I did not uh -oh. say that. Penalty. No, yeah, thank you. Penalty. Floor, I did not. Thank you. I did not thank complete you. that word. First of all, floor, I did not. Camera? Bye. He said no, I didn't, I didn't complete the word. He said the F word. No, I did not. Curtis. Take a walk. Bye. This would not be the first no, time that Molina would be sent off with a penalty. What's that, shadow puppets? Six minutes on the on, uh, clock, you can come back in. Oh, cool. That is just... Well, with a relatively young field here at the main event. Thanks for, your, thanks for your chips, though. That was this great. This type of juvenile behavior was bound to crop up under the pressure of the millions of dollars that they are playing for, but that still is no excuse for the school romantics. Well, now he can make a phone call and curse all he wants. So Molina sent off to cool his heels as we move back to the feature table. And we do see antics from this guy, Umberto Brennis, but they're always good-natured in their intent. Brett Butler has joined the feature table. We saw him dodge elimination earlier, now with a ton of chips. Eric Freiberg with almost six million is second in chips now. And the Swedish player has pocket nines. Maybe the Swedes are the best players in the world. He makes the call of the big blind. 24,000 chips. Brennis with king of hearts, jack of clubs. Three. You see, when Umberto raises, there are so many things he has to coordinate. I need to come with you. Oh, all in. All in. All in. All in. All in. Here comes the shark. I need to gamble. He does need what chips. Uh, maybe, maybe two in the three in the pot chipping. You may want to chip it down. Okay. Can you? Come do you know how much you have? Uh, Frankfurt just wants a number. He can't understand a word Nothing otherwise. Two. He is too much for me. You are my friend from Switzerland. Double Umberto. Umberto <laughs> can play. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's pocket change for Freiburg. More. Yeah. No. Okay. You the 24 in. Yeah, you put 24, okay? Is that right? Yeah, 261. Freiburg with almost 6 million. My friend, you All give right, me life. I call you. Okay. So Perfect. Freiburg makes the call. Yeah. And Brennis in for his tournament life. So? Yeah, I call you. I want to see you. Oh, so. I, I can gamble with you. All right. Brennis is the gambling. one gambling. He's behind and all in. Okay. You know who is the king? Pero sigo siendo el rey. I believe we're listening to Umberto's version of Stairway to Heaven. Umberto, I am the king. You know, con dinero y sin dinero. 
Hago siempre lo que quiero. <laughs> the flop gives Brennis a straight draw. Mujeres en mi vida. Ya tengo la idea. Y el 10. Venga, mujeres en mi vida. He's calling for mujeres a lady. Mujeres en mi vida. Turn is the lady. Mujeres en mi vida. Woman in my life. straight. I need double. I told you. I need some people coming with me. Freiburg yeah, is still sent Umberto those, home with an ace those. or a nine. River cards a king, Umberto oh, king, lives. King, who is the king? I am the king, pero sigo siendo el rey. Do you know in Spanish? Con dinero y sin dinero, hago siempre lo que quiero. Y mi palabra es la ley. It's supposed to be English only, but when Umberto speaks English, it's not English. <laughs> so a good finish for Umberto yeah, Brennis. I need double my stack. Thank you. And despite doubling now, up, he's way the below the average, but nice to know he'll still be spreading his good cheer into the next day of poker. The day also ended well for the other established pros still left in the yeah, field. Come on, put me all in. <laughs> While some young guns like Brian, the icon, Mycon, were sent home. What are you going to do? Other young characters showed no signs of backing down. I call. I haven't looked. Especially the brash Eric Molina, who was sent to the penalty box. He's not getting to me. But Jamie Gold is getting to a lot of people with his confident playing style and huge chip stack. <laughs> For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. Thanks for watching the World Series of Poker.